So we're going to talk a little bit about, um, well, a lot about bicarbonate TCO2, and we're going to kind of go a little bit how to approach this and how to get to figuring out what's going on in our acid base on our regular like, chemistry panel. And so I always start by looking at TCO2 and anion gap together, and sometimes you have to calculate the anion gap, which we've gone over previously. And so a couple of things to realize, again, when you have bicarbonate, it's the same as TCO2. And I have the cation versus anion graphs here, and pretty soon we're just going to talk about the anion side. So when you have bicarbonate, of course it can be normal, that's one possibility, but you can have a low bicarbonate, and that's what today's lecture is going to focus on. So a low bicarbonate, or a low TCO2, can be due to two things. One of them is titration. So you can... Use bicarbonate, right? Its main job in the body, body is to titrate away acids. And so if there's excess acids, titrating away or causing titration of bicarbonate, we call that a titrational metabolic acidosis. Because of course a low bicarbonate equals an acidosis. And because it's the metabolic side, it equals a metabolic acidosis. And so, again, you can have titrational metabolic acidosis. That's option one. And what supports that, of course, is what we've talked about before, which is an increase in anion gap. Because, of course, anion gap tells us that there's excess acids. And so those are, of course, clue. So you can also have a secretional or loss metabolic acidosis. And this is actually due to where you're losing bicarb. And where do you lose bicarb? Well, almost the same places you lose everything else. And so this could be within the kidney, so you can have renal loss, you can have GI loss, such as diarrhea, and then saliva, which would be choke, usually in large animals. And so renal, it's going to be acute kidney injury. Certain drugs can do it. GI diarrhea, we see this in neonates most commonly, some in older, mostly large animals more so. In saliva, of course, you'd need the relevant history. So we've talked about the titrational metabolic acidosis and it being clue, and the fact that when you're increasing this anion gap over here, and it's going into your bicarbonate, it is going to not affect your chloride. So now what we're talking about with the loss secretional, which I went over, I think, in the review, the acid-base review, that you're actually going to change your chloride. So on the left-hand side, and again, this is just kind of our anion side or our negative side, where you have anion gap and bicarbonate and chloride, that's the normal. And we go over to our loss side. So you're actually losing bicarbonate. And we're going to talk about, so where, again, can you lose it? So you're losing bicarbonate, and that's causing chloride to increase, essentially. And that's to maintain electric neutrality. And so a few things to realize. So when you have a loss of bicarbonate or this loss metabolic acidosis or secretional metabolic acidosis, what you're going to do to look for that, well, a few things is that your anion gap may be unchanged. So anion gap can be normal. Or if you have a concurrent titrational, it can be increased. So that's when we talk about more than one thing happening. So an anion gap that's normal would support it more so. You're going to look for chloride that is increased relative to sodium. And so remember, normally we say that they increase and decrease usually together, but this means that the chloride's doing something that sodium isn't. So this can be an absolute increase in chloride, or it can be a relative increase in chloride, or excuse me, in sodium. So chloride might be increased, and sodium might be normal. Maybe you have a normal chloride, but a decreased sodium. 
And so you're going to actually, I usually eyeball it, and I'll give you an equation to use, but what you're going to do is you're going to look to see what's happening in sodium versus chloride. And what would support a loss metabolic acidosis, again, is if chloride is increased more so than sodium. So again, you can eyeball it. That's one option. That's an eyeball. The other is you can actually do a calculation, and there's practice of this calculation in the, um, in the case book. And so you can calculate the mean. So you'll calculate the mean of the reference range for each sodium and chloride. And then you're going to compare each to the mean of that reference range. So let's say that the mean of the reference range of sodium was, you know, 150 and chloride, the mean of the reference range was 115. So those are our means right here, and you have to do it for each one. And so perhaps here's our patient. Let's use a different color. So our patient sodium and chloride. So perhaps our patient sodium is 140, and our patient chloride and our patient chloride is perhaps 114. So the difference between the patient and the mean for the sodium is the patient is 10 below its mean, and the patient chloride is 1 below its mean. And so we consider a discrepancy is if there is greater than 3 difference, so there, there's greater than a three difference on the same side of the mean, then we consider that there is a sodium versus chloride discrepancy. Again, now you probably know why I eyeball it, because that's easier. So a couple things to realize. I'm going to tell you about the secretional or loss metabolic acidosis a little bit more in a second. But to realize, again, that you can have an increase in anion gap in this. So you can have a concurrent secretional or loss metabolic acidosis with a titrational metabolic acidosis where this would actually increase and then you get a very low bicarb. So if only one is present, we call that a simple disorder. This would be a more complex disorder where you have more than one thing occurring. So again, where can you lose bicarbonate? So here we get our decrease in bicarbonate. And that can happen, one, through the kidneys, so you can have renal loss. And certainly drug history would be relevant. But a big one that we talk about is acute kidney injury. And that's because, of course, you remember that super important part of our proximal renal tubule. So that proximal convoluted tubule, which is right here, reabsorbs a lot of bicarbonate. And so this is also that super metabolically active place that when you have acute kidney injury, you get damage. And so acute kidney injury especially, although any kind of renal failure potentially could, but acute kidney injury, especially to the proximal convoluted tubule, is a big one. So what are you going to look for? Well, you're going to look for things like azotemia. Of course, we also know that we lose sodium and chloride here. So you may see decreases in sodium and chloride, but of course our chloride won't be as decreased. You can look for signs of renal tubular injury. So those are casts, and the big casts that tell us injury are cellular casts, granular casts, and waxy casts. That tells us there's actually injury. You may see glucosuria with a normal glucose in the serum, and that's of course because glucose is reabsorbed here. You may see some proteinuria, but I think we know that there's lots of causes of proteinuria, and that may not be that helpful for us to actually prove it. So, that's supposed to say proteinuria. Okay, so another cause is GI, and this is diarrhea. And a lot of diarrhea does not cause uh, secretional or loss metabolic acidosis. 
but it can. And this is more often in large animals. And of course, you need some sort of history to know this. If it was a, a neonate of a large animal, that would certainly, even without history, always worry they're going to have diarrhea. Um, vomiting tends to either be gastric vomiting, where you just lose hydrochloric acid, or you can have duodenal vomiting, but then you tend to lose both. So this is mostly GI diarrhea that we're talking about. And then the last one where you can lose bicarbonate is super uncommon uh, in terms of doing blood work, and that's choke, uh, and that means there's some sort of obstruction where you have a lot of saliva loss, especially in large animals where they have so much bicarbonate in their saliva.